Hi, this is Sanjay Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Newsroom. And today we have with us Zohar Kaufman, co-founder and VP of R&D at uh, Portshift. Now, if you look at security, uh, things are changing rapidly in the cloud and cloud native space. Traditionally, security was always an afterthought. No developer, no company started building their product with security in mind. Uh, and when we talk about cloud, we cannot stop talking about Kubernetes. So. Can you explain uh, the the reasoning behind why security, first of all, is becoming a, not only a serious but at at most uh, importance for cloud native developers, especially in the in the context of Kubernetes? First of all, I I must agree with you that security have uh, you know during over time a shifted left, and it starts now at the developer. It starts uh, during the CI and the CD processes. Uh, it's very common now, and we also supply uh, such tools to scan your uh, deployment plans beforehand. And when you create the code, you know exactly what are the vulnerabilities and uh, what uh, are the, your weaknesses in the code. And it's okay to take risk, but it should be calculated risk. So you need at least to know about them and approve them. So this is, you know, uh, as for the shift left. With regards to the, your, your second question, uh, Kubernetes be, uh, become so widely deployed, and uh, I think that the recent uh, surveys show that uh, uh, more than 80% of organizations are actually using Kubernetes. So uh, because of that, the attack surface uh, has, you know, uh, Kubernetes uh, became, became very lucrative for attackers. And this is why it's very important uh, to have a security solution for Kubernetes. How different is security or the threats that, you know, organizations face uh, in the cloud native space versus traditional IT. Because if you look at traditional IT, uh, security was more about, you know, all those firewalls are there. It also depends what kind of business you're into. Like, for example, if you're into br uh, banking and ideal financial, fraud detection and a lot of things, they also kind of become part of security. Versus here, it's we're talking microservices, we're talking about function as, you know, sort of, so it, it, it's the, the workloads are also different. The, how you're consuming it is different, how you're delivering it is different. Does that also mean the threats are also different? Traditional uh, companies, uh, they secured their perimeter and uh, you know, built a big wall around the castle and, and felt secure. And this was fine. But uh, now the castle is all over the place. Uh, you have uh, your workloads in the cloud. So perimeter is undefined, actually. Uh, and you know, in the COVID-19 days, uh, everybody's working from home. So actually, your perimeter is the home, all the home places of uh, your employees. So it becomes much difficult, uh, much more difficult uh, to defend the perimeter. It's actually a floating perimeter. And specifically when sp talking about Kubernetes, so uh, the most widely deployed Kubernetes deployments are actually in the, cl in the cloud. So you have Kubernetes and like you said, microservices, uh, each of the microservices exposing an API. So you uh, uh, traditionally you have you know one gateway and every, everything flows uh, you know through this gateway, and uh, uh, you know internal code snippets were not exposed to to users. Here, uh, each microservice is actually exposing an API that could be customer facing. So lots of microservices are actually uh, have an external interface, and you need to protect also uh, these microservices that are actually outbound facing. Kubernetes itself, uh, it's a, it's a complicated, it's a complex uh, piece of technology. It's not meant to be easy, uh, but uh, the, what they have succeeded in doing it, what we have seen with many other projects where they get bloated, they lose track of it. With what, what is happening with Kubernetes is that it's a, uh, a very, very uh, healthy ecosystem is thriving around where you know, a lot of adjacent technologies, they, they, they kind of, you can plug it in to solve one specific problem. When you look at security, uh, so first of all, Kubernetes itself, the code base of Kubernetes itself, and then you put, Additional components, you know, as you know, Portship is also working a lot of things. So, can you talk about the uh, security in the context of Kubernetes specific, not not in cloud native in general? Kubernetes uh, ha was designed first and foremost for ease of use, for you know, DevOps for developers, uh, and it's a great tool. And it, no wonder it uh, it is as successful as it, as it is. Uh, but you know, sometimes uh, security was an afterthought. 
For example, two years ago, uh, the most uh, you know most famous attack was the, the the dashboard of Kubernetes. You know the ability to control any workload that you you ha- you have there and control actually all your Kubernetes uh, resources, uh, where it was by default exposed to the whole world. So if I, I was an attacker, I I can just uh, you know go to your dashboard and and do anything. So ease of use is important, but security should come hand in hand uh, with that. So Kubernetes over time improved, and it has some uh, you know built in uh, built in security me- uh, methodologies. However, some of them are lacking. Uh, so uh, or uh, alternatively, very hard to use. Um, you have, uh, for example, you have RBACs, role based access controls or permissions. Uh, if you have a new uh, deployment, uh, you, you probably it is accompanied by the permissions that it needs. It's huge YAMLs that uh, nobody can read. You know, you must have something automatic that can scan it and show you the risks that uh, these permissions have. Uh, the same for security context. If I'm a developer, uh, why not allow my, my microservice to run as root? But if it runs on root and has some vulnerability, then uh, an attacker may, can gain access to the node, the, the computer that is running my uh, my microservice, and from there on do lateral movement uh, to to other places. So we must accompany the ease of use uh, with security methods, uh, and you know uh, uh, both Portshift and other vendors are actually trying to strengthen uh, se- Kubernetes security in order for it to, bo- to be both uh, uh, very easy to use and also secure. If I'm not wrong, Portshift recently also announced Kubernetes uh, Shield or K8 uh, Shield. I like these names. <laughs> um, uh, t- talk a bit about uh, uh, what is you know context-aware security for Kubernetes environment and uh, and and also I want to also understand once you when we de- deal with this question, second would be that who is your target audience? Because let's let's talk about the K8 Shield and then we'll talk about the second part. Kubernetes Shield or K8 Shield. Uh, what we try to uh, to bring to the world is uh, our realistic view uh, of the attack vectors. Uh, so uh, we show the customer. So we have a cluster. Uh, we immediately uh, we can show the customer uh, the, pay, the the risk points in the cu- in the cluster. So the, there is the Mitre f- uh, attack framework uh, the, that uh, was you know introduced uh, by the Mitre organization, and um, we show according to the attack vector defined there uh, what is weak and what is strong in your cluster. So for example, if a, a certain workload can delete logs. So why should it delete logs from Kubernetes? Uh, this is not uh, something that, uh, that, that is widely used and can be used for defense evasion. So deleting, you know, your, your, covering your tracks in order to cover uh, your, your attack. So if for, uh, there are pods, uh, pods or containers that they are, are allowed to do that, then of course we, we point it out as a risk because there is no need to, for example, for, for this. So there are also other uh, attack vectors for example, how can a, an attacker uh, access uh, first access your cluster? How can they execute uh, stuff? How can they uh, do privilege escalation? Is the lateral movement available? And wh- what are your weak points? So all these we highlight for you and show you, you know, your strong point and again your weaknesses. And as long as you are aware of the risk, it's okay that you'll approve them, but at least you sh- must be aware of them first. Zohar, thank you so much for, for talking to me today. Uh, not only explaining or talking about uh, the KS, K8 Shield and other you know technology that BoardShift is working on, but also in general, how the whole security landscape is changing in the cloud native world. And uh, I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day.